Thursday at 3 p.m. It is the NBA trade deadline and with the amount of chatter going on throughout the association right now, it appears we could be in for a busy 24 hours. With Philadelphia 76ers, late-night acquisition of Tobias Harris, will the rest of the contenders in the East be forced into action? What might the Toronto Raptors do? Will Anthony Davis remain in the Big Easy? How different will the Memphis Grizzlies look after them? Deadline, Celtics undeterred in their pursuit of 80 years what we know about where the Anthony Davis sweepstakes stands, the brow is only interested in signing long-term, with one of the Los Angeles Lakers, Los Angeles Clippers, New York Knicks or Milwaukee Bucks. Outside of the Lakers, these other three destinations represent logistical nightmares for the New Orleans Pelicans to work out out a trade. With Tobias Harris' trade, the Clippers are flush with draft picks, but don't have any live bodies that make a deal work. The Knicks appear to be readying themselves to pursue two max deals in the offseason, Kyrie, KD, and right now have the best lottery odds by virtue of being dead last in the league. Would an offer of their first-round pick that could potentially turn into Zion Williamson and, say, Kevin Knox interest the Pelicans? Perhaps, but it would be difficult to envision the Knicks trading away the chance to draft the young superstar. Wait, no, that's not true. It's actually very easy to envision the Knicks doing that, but in all likelihood, they won't this time. The idea of a Giannis AD pairing must make the Bucks salivate, but they simply don't have the assets to get that trade done. As for the Lakers, they've reportedly broken off talks after the Pelicans rejected their last offer of Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Evitza Zubik, Kentavious Caldwell Pope and two firsts. They will no doubt circle back before the deadline, but there is clearly acrimony here between the two teams in a sense that Davis's agent, Rich Paul, who happens to also represent LeBron James, is attempting to strong-arm Dell Demps into a trade with LA. So what about the Boston Celtics? Now, barring a trade of Kyrie Irving, which is not happening, the Celtics are unable to trade AD until the summer. Why? Because of something called the Derrick Rose Rule that stipulates an exceptional player is able to sign a new deal after their rookie contract ends that encompasses 30% of the salary cap, rather than the standard 25. In order to be a player who qualifies for the exception, you need to have won an MVP, Defensive Player of the Year or received two All-NBA selections, previously, it was two All-Star starts, in your first four seasons. The rule also stipulates that a team can only trade for one Rose Rule player at a time, so with both Kyrie and AD having been signed under the Rose Rule, the Celtics cannot have both. Oh, and there's the whole thing about Anthony Davis potentially hating the Boston Celtics. Last week, his father sent a text to ESPN's Ramona Shelburne revealing that he hopes his son would never play for Boston because of the way they treated Isaiah Thomas. Thomas, as you recall, starred for the Celtics in the 2017 playoffs after battling back through injury and the tragic death of his sister in a car accident. His playoffs were cut short due to a hip injury that required surgery and Thomas ended up being dealt that summer to the Cleveland Cavaliers as part of the deal to acquire Irving. Still, the Celtics are undeterred. The Athletics' Sam Amick reports that among the pieces that the Celtics would be willing to send to NOLA in the summer is burgeoning star Jason Tatum. The 20-year-old forward is likely the singular best piece on offer in any league-wide proposal for Davis and would be difficult to top, so the question is now whether or not the Pelicans can wait to move 80 or will ship him out before Thursday's deadline. Another Lakers note from Amick, the Pelicans are believed to be asking for as many as eight picks from LA in any potential trade for Davis. Stay tuned on this one because it seems that there will be more twists ahead of the deadline. Tearing down the grist the grit and grind era in Memphis is dead and it's time to bury it and that's what Chris Wallace is trying to do in moving longtime franchise cornerstones Mike Conley and Marcus All. But he's not going to give them away. The New York Times' Mark Stein reports that Wallace's approach to moving Conley is going to be informed by the earlier trades of Chris Dapps, Porzingis and Tobias Harris and that both the Knicks and Clippers received multiple first-round picks. 
Memphis is said to be seeking multiple first-round picks in exchange for Conley. And we have seen two deals in the last week, Porzingis and Tobias, that had teams, Dallas and Philly, willing to go to those lengths. Mark Stein at the Stein Line, February 6, 2019 Is this a reasonable ask? Well, Porzingis, while currently injured, is only 23 and the Sixers saw Harris as a key piece to help emerge in a wide-open East, making them motivated buyers. While Conley is an exceptional talent, a couple of key things make the situation different. Conley is 31 and will earn $34.5 million next season. On top of this, he isn't exactly durable. He hasn't played more than 70 games since 2015, including missing almost all of last season with season-ending heel surgery. One first-round pick, sure, but two will definitely be a difficult ask for Wallace. As for with whom the Grizzlies are engaging, it appears that the Utah Jazz and Detroit Pistons are the club's most interested, but neither has met the asking price as of yet. The Jazz's package would likely be built around Ricky Rubio and another young roster player, while the Pistons, who traded Reggie Bullock to the Lakers on Tuesday night, will base theirs around Reggie Jackson. Reported Toronto Raptors, Grizzlies blockbuster that would see both Conley and Gasol head to Toronto for Kyle Lowry and Jonas Valanciunas never had much traction, depending on who you believe, and it now appears likely that Conley and Gasol will be moved in separate transactions. During Tuesday night's contest with the Minnesota Timberwolves, Gasol did not play and it appeared that his locker had been cleaned out. When he came to sit on the bench midway through the game, he received a standing ovation from the FedEx Forum crowd in what certainly felt like a goodbye. According to multiple reports, significant traction has been made between the Grizzlies and Charlotte Hornets on a Gasol deal that would likely see Malik Monk and Moorhead back to the Grizzlies.